Namaste. I have a very important guest today. Many of you already know her, but for those who don't, this is my guest and my friend Vandana Shivaji. So uh, I'm seeing you in person after maybe 10 years. Yes, huh? Raj, if you But know. I've followed you since the 70s. I've followed you for a long time. I followed you before you knew anything about me. I was following <laughs> you. My research on the transfer of Indian traditional knowledge to the West being appropriated, being digested by them, then they rename it, then they call it their own, sometimes they twist it around, then they re-export it to us, we got to pay all kinds of money for it and give them honor. That covers many, many fields and one of them is the knowledge about agriculture, the knowledge about botany, the knowledge about organic farming and things of that sort. In that, Dr. Vandana Shiva has been a very important fact probably the central player of my research, the central person. I want to start by asking Dr. Shiva, uh, what was the state of our agriculture a hundred years ago before all this modernization started as per British who were studying our agriculture. So this is a book uh, written by somebody who visited India in the early 1900s. What was it all about? What did he conclude? Tell us about yeah. it. Rajiv, Sir Albert Howard didn't visit India. Please he visit was India. sent to India to change India's agriculture. Okay. In those days, there was no industrialization of a big kind of agriculture. and There was no discipline called agriculture science. Okay. But there was a discipline of industrial botany. Okay. And it was basically how to turn the colonies into bigger suppliers of raw material. After all, cotton, indigo was what ran the cotton empire of that time. Howard was a good scientist, an honest scientist. He was sent to set up the Pusa Institute. It's now in Delhi, but the original Pusa Institute was to have been Pusa in Bihar. And he arrives and he says, I found the soils were fertile and I found there were no pest attacks damaging the crops. So I decided to make the Indian peasant and the pest my professor on how to do good farming. Under the professorship of the present, he then wrote this book, which is called the Agricultural Testament and is also called the Bible of Modern Organic Farming. So he learned this from India. And he acknowledges it in his book. This is in my U-turn, this is stage one. Stage one is when the Westerner comes, acknowledges he's a student, he's a disciple, he's learning. And he says, you guys have something to offer. And here I am, please teach me. So he's in stage one. He's, he's a stage one person. He's stage one. And it's only when I was, you know, I had grown up on my mother's farm. She had come as a refugee from Pakistan. And the farm was beautiful. This is the first time I saw it in the literature because the literature wasn't in, well, in the 70s, 80s when I was starting to look at the living sciences much more. This book is what showed to me that what I was seeing with my eyes was true. And the two brilliant things in this book is he acknowledges the two things our civilization is based on. He says, no farm in India is a monoculture. Is a monoculture. They're built based on mixtures. Mixtures. Uh, and those days the word biodiversity did not exist. So he said there's always pluralism. We used to grow gehu with chana, so gehu with pluralism mustard. of crops. Of diversity, diversity of crops. Diversity of crops as part of the farming know-how. Exactly. Farm know this and is an Indian invention. And he mentions very clearly in the book that no farmer of India plants a cereal without a legume. And long before the West figured out that legumes are nitrogen fixing crops, the Indian peasant knew it. He says they were still debating in the early part of the last century whether pulses fix nitrogen. Our dal has been not just a staple of our thali, our dal has been a staple in our agriculture. So this is science. This is really solid this science. This is true science. This is but a, the second one is even more important principle, which resonates totally with me in terms of my ecological learning and my ecological science. He says, if you don't practice the law of return, of giving back, then you are a bandit and you're ruining the soil. Now he learned this from the peasant. 
He developed it more with the scientific background that he had. It became something called the indoor process of composting. Composting was sent to the West via Howard. Composting meaning that you, you take biomass you take and you mass. digest it. You digest it in the soil, you and turn it into organic. Or into organic matter for the soil. So recycling. It's recycling but it does more. It brings life to the soil because otherwise the soil is just minerals. Aha. So that is what chemicals cannot do. They okay. cannot do it. They kill it. the life. They kill the life. But the more important point is not only is this bringing fertility to the soil and his data was showing 200% increase in productivity. Our data is showing similar results. But for that much organic matter in the soil, the soil becomes a water reservoir holding three times its weight. So this is very interesting. The science that our people knew also included these processes are very multifaceted. Not only are you recycling the nutrients and so on, but you're also bringing life into the soil and you're bringing water capacity to hold the water. And it's very important to understand because 75% of us agriculture has been rain fed. Right. How could we in rain fed agriculture without irrigation grow crops? This was the magic. This is all acknowledged by him 100 years ago. 100 years ago. And written in a book and then he takes it back and he does this indoor project to create organic uh, uh, soil, organic soil, recycle the nutrients and bring life. Uh, then what happens? And, and, and this book is then the foundation of the Soil Association. Where? In England. Okay. And is the foundation of the organic movement in America. Rodale came to meet him. Okay. Rodale is the big name in organic farming in America. There's a Rodale Research Center in Pennsylvania. And then I remember when I was being attacked by my friends in the toxic corporations whom I call the poison cartel, they said Vandana Shiva is importing and foreign technology called organic into uh, India. See, that's stage five. So, uh, stage one they learn, uh, stage two they kind of decontextualize from the Vedic heritage and say it's generic and all that. Stage three they recontextualize it and call it their own. Yeah. Stage four they may even bad mouth the source that some primitive people, backward people. And stage five they re-export it and our people are happy to say, oh, wow, foreign cheese is coming. So, you were attacked for bringing so, our knowledge. Promoting knowledge. organic on the basis of my knowledge knowledge, my science reaffirmed yes. by Albert Howard. Yes. So what I did in response to the Monsanto attack was we organized Howard lectures to have the country recognize where organic went from that we are the source of, of ecological farming, farming agroecology and that's why we did this book two years ago Krishi Sutram the Vedic roots of agroecology now there's a new language called agroecology, which is the science of ecology for farming. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here and also hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified. To donate, please click this button.